President Bola Tinumbu, and of course the NPC team and every one of them, they have discovered an illegal or connection through the all theft uh, situation assessment delegation left by, led by Minister of Defense, Malam Mohamed Baduru, uh, and uh, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Oil, as uh, Mr. Henikin Lokoberi, as well as members uh, of that group and others. The team visited the Trans Niger Pipeline right way in Owaza, Abia, where the array of uh, dismantled illegal connections were observed. According to the Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, Nigeria loses an average of $7.2 million monthly through these illegal activities. Also, illegal bunkery operations and environmental devastation has caused severe economic losses for the nation. Today with me on the show is co-founder and CEO of Budget, Mr. Olusio Onigunde, to look at all of this and of course the implication on our economy. Mr. Onigunde, thank you so much. Uh, let's get straight to this very quickly. What is your reaction to this renewed drive, this zeal by government to address uh, crude oil theft squarely? Yeah, thank you so much, Sulu. I think it is an existential issue for Nigeria at this point. Um, considering that previously um, we seem not to pay enough attention to it. Um, let's not really forget that um, in the last two years, there have been record oil prices um, at the, uh, due to the shift in the global market. I mean, the Russia Ukraine um, crisis that is going on. And unfortunately, Nigeria has not profited from that. Our oil production has over between 1 to 1.2 million barrels. Well, the previous times we have gotten to around 2.1 million barrels. And a significant point of shortage in that has been the issue of, of, of crude oil theft and bunkering, and illegal bunkering specifically. Um, I think, uh, when I say it's an existential issue, because we are in a situation where the currency value is collapsing. And we all know that for you to be able to meet the demand in the market, you need a supply of dollars. And where else would you have a supply of dollars? When 90% of our foreign exchange um, in terms of goods uh, comes from oil. So we don't have any other choice than to figure out a way to go back to maximum oil production capacity because it's critical for our fiscal and monetary stability. Um, and so I feel that what the federal government is doing is right. I don't want to also have enough shoes and enough tech like we because we don't need a minister of two ministers and shall I to be able to support legal connection. Let us be something much more systemic. And the way to do this is to do community engagement. That has to be the Petroleum Industry Act already emphasizes a host community trust fund and puts the burden um, on the communities to protect these um, facilities. Um, it seems that we implemented every component of the PIA, but we forgot the, um, the host community trust fund. So if we institutionalize frameworks like that, can as well use these communities to become the protectors of these assets. Um, I, I feel like the federal government has to step up because whatever is happened before, where we're producing a million, million barrels per day, it's a shame to Nigeria and it does not even help with us. The time level prices are very, very high. Hmm. Let's move to uh, the Minister of Finance and, of course, Coordinating Minister of the Economy. A lot of work seems to be uh, set for Mr. Wale Edun, because if you look at the present state of the economy and even the figures from the GDP that came in late last week, first, let me ask you how you react to that. And do you see any form of quick wins here? We are at the point of palliative distribution uh, now, of course, following subsidy removal and unification of exchange rates. Your reaction to all of these issues at this time. Where should Mr. Edun take this up from? I think it might be a challenge. I mean, let's not lie to ourselves. The first six months of this year um, carried a whole level of inactivity. So, I mean, those were forecasted 2.5, 2.8 window of the right. I mean, uh, we're going at 2.35. Um, it's not significant growth and to recharge the economy. I feel we might slightly be worse in this quarter. Let's not forget that the removal of first subsidy has not fully taking its toll. Um, the economy is crawling. Um, a whole of activity has been slowed down. Um, unemployment is rising. Um, and if you want to do an a clear example of that is look at the streets of Lagos. I mean, um, traffic has slowed down significantly. 
um, I mean, there's no traffic in the way, and it's a, it's a challenge that just show you that the economy um, is in a bad place currently. Um, uh, and something has to be able to accelerate that economy. And in my own view, it's simple. Focus on agriculture first. I mean, food production, um, food inflation, those are the things that you need to tackle primarily first. If you're going to be able to make an any other headway in the economy. Um, you also want to be able to focus on access to credits in the system. Um, all these opalities of two handfuls of rice and a spoon of oil, all of that will not transform the economy in any way. Um, you need to put a, put a credit to the economy so that, it can, especially in the hands of entrepreneurs, so I can turbocharge the economy uh, for where it is right now. Then you need to now build you know, a formal social register so that you can provide support to the most vulnerable and the most challenged people in society. I feel the Minister of Finance has his work cut out for him. Um, because of the devaluation in of, of currency, it means that the federal government will get more revenue in higher terms. Um, so you might have a bit of pushing um, that the previous administration didn't have um, in terms of um, revenues to do things. But let's not forget, uh, Nigeria has a lot of legal bonds payments due, our uh, debt services costs rising. Federal government will definitely accept the minimum wage in the next few months. So definitely all of that cost has going to escalate again. Um, and I know the easiest of times for Nigeria, but we will really have more efficiency with the revenues that we have. And two, engineer productivity. And I'm, like I've said, only engineer productivity, you need to look at food production and inflation, you need to look at credit systems, and you need to look at axes of doing business. All of that has to come into play before we can move uh, the process forward. Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, before I go back to the oil theft issue, because I saw some pictures now uh, of that um, uh, event where the ministers actually visited on the sport assessment of what is happening around uh, River State, uh, Delta State, and uh, all of those states. But before I go there, I'd like us to talk a bit about technology. Uh, Basun Tijani, Dr. Basun Tijani will be in charge of uh, communications and digital technology. And everyone is talking about expectations on that space. As it has to do with youth, I like your comments around that, Shil. <laughs> well, that's a tough one for me because Moses Jani um, is a friend and a mentor, and I sincerely wish him well in this endeavor. Um, for long, he's been a great guy molding the ecosystem, tech ecosystem. Um, it's not just in Lagos, but across Africa. And he's also been persistent about contributing um, to policy um, in, across across the continent. Um, he's been there on the AFCTA. He's been there um, on 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 on, um, on um, startup bill and all of those things. Uh, I know there is a lot of expectations for me. Let's not lie. I mean, you apart from the agriculture, significant component of the GDP would be the ICT sector. Um, so he has a whole lot on his neck you know, to take, and he has to do much more. But my own expectations for him is, uh, I mean, he made an announcement uh, with $500 million fund by the World Bank, for loans specifically, to help on digital uh, identity. So I think that's a very good note to start. Nigeria needs a proper digital identity system. Um, there is need for optimizing um, what has happened, what's happened with the NIMC and and the knee numbers, all of that needs to, you know, the idea of carrying a voter ID, a NIN ID, different ID, someone has to be able to alleviate that to Singapore. So I'm, high expectations are there for him to succeed on that. Also the startup economy, how he's able to bring back um, liquidity, local liquidity, I mean, to the startup economy. He's done it before, um, when he launched the CC of um, Growth Fund, I believe he has an opportunity to build a platform because a lot of times when you look at startup raising funds, raising capital from um, external sources. Let's not forget that the devaluation of the currency does not do them any help um, in terms of valuation, in terms of revenue targets. So um, for them to also raise money locally would be something I'll be expecting of them to engineer a culture of people who have commitment and interest to support um, startup funding locally. And I'm also expecting to step up on the issue of policy, broadband access. This will be my own three points for you. Broadband access, you know, cheaper, accessible broadband access for more Nigerians um, across universities, across health institutions. Um, those are the kind of things I would expect from him. Um, and wishing well in that position. It's taking a very difficult um, 
uh, comprehensive position does a lot of intersection with either defense or uh, finance uh, um, and, and he, 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 uh, trade investment and he, I'm, I'm sure that he's very very capable of giving effect. But before I let you go, uh, uh, Sheo, let's talk about monitoring and evaluation of all of these initiatives instituted by government. Because many will say uh, everyone should have uh, KPIs, you know, and, um, you know, uh, they should set targets and it should be monitored, well monitored. What's your reaction to that and how do you think that can be well implemented this time around? I think it can be implemented. Uh, so the president to make decisions. Let's not forget that the previous administration hardly cared about the performance of ministers. The people who had uh, woeful, very woeful performance, and they still ran the course for nearly eight years. Um, the spokesperson to the president uh, spoke toughly um, about the fact that the current president will not tolerate um, incompetence and poor performance. That's yet to be seen. Um, but I think that um, there has to be structured monitor and evaluation. The previous government also wanted to do something. I think I don't even my short stays as a technical advisor and I, I was able to contribute a little bit into that. But I don't know, I don't know. All and right. is create a lot of impact as much as possible. Yeah. Um, but we have not seen that uh, All right, there, Shion. Are we able to get Shion to wrap up that point? Well, not to. Can you see me? Can you yes, me? yes. We, we, I think network issues, we were they able to get the audio towards the end of your submission. Uh, I was just saying that it's something that is genuine and important. And I want the president to look for someone who has a lot of competence in monitoring and evaluation for the ministerial portfolio. They must sign um, a performance deed. There must be a scorecard. It must be evaluated um, um, concurrently. And, and that should be the person that should be closest to the president. Um, you know, if you put out in the chief of staff framework, it might be a bit difficult to do. So my advice is the president should have a scorecard the evaluation team close to him as able to tell him about the performance of the ministers. All right, then I must thank you so much. Let me allow you to settle in. Uh, Co-founder, Chief Executive Officer, Budget, Mr. Lucio Wonigminde. Have a great time uh, in Abuja. We'll talk later. Thank you so much. Thank you.